I'd love to hear just a simple breakdown that somebody could apply then for a, a breathing morning routine. Sure. So what I've tried to do, and I just want to be clear, I'm not a breathing therapist. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a breathing evangelist. That's not my role. I'm a journalist, right? I went into this world just trying to look at the subject in the most objective, non-political way as I possibly could. I have no skin in either game, either side of this argument between medical professionals, because there's doctors in my family and other people who understand breathing in this different level, this, this psychic level. I just want to go in and get information. So having said that, that's the big caveat section of the podcast here. Yeah, of course, I picked up some tips, right, <laughs> that I want to incorporate into my life. So just starting off the day, if you're able to just steal away for three minutes, for five minutes, if you can push it for 10 minutes and just focus on your breathing when you wake up, it can make a very big difference to your day. I do a practice as part of something called Sudarshan Kriya, which is an inhale to four, a hold to four, an exhale to six, a hold for two. So inhale to four, hold four, exhale six, hold two. Uh, I find that that's very calming. You can do box breathing, inhale four, hold four, exhale four, hold four. You just breathe into a box. You can find all this stuff on YouTube, right? The instructions are easy, but it doesn't need to be complicated for it to work. And that's what people are developing these very elaborate breathing techniques. And okay, that works for you, but the simple stuff can be just as effective as the most complicated stuff. It just depends on how you do it. So if you're able to do that in the morning, that's great. But it's very important when you sit down and work, you open up your monitors and you're, oh man, what am I going to do today? To, Yeah, you're stressed. So don't let that stress take over your body and your mind. Control your breathing. You control your breathing. You control your stress. So that's the anchor here. You can try different apps for that, different apps with different timers to just have a rhythm to your breath. Same inhale, same exhale is a good way of staying balanced, alert, and relaxed at the same time. I want to break this down into two things. So there's the um, athletic performance and, and then also for, for a lot of our viewers, like how does this carry over into this everyday life business? So athletic like for athletic performance obviously it's massive but that that everyday life um if this was transferred into the business in, in the business world or into the workplace that like how is this helping in in those places well when you fix your breathing and you focus on your breathing and you adopt healthier breathing habits it's going to fix you it's going to help you across the board it may not fix every single one of your problems of course it doesn't but it can only help you and that's what's interesting about breathing is there's no side effects. Sometimes when you take a drug, a pharmaceutical drug or whatever, it's like, yeah, it can help you in some ways, but there's all these other side effects. Fixing your breathing and increasing your healthy breathing only has benefits. So whether or not you're a corporate warrior or a weekend athlete or professional athlete, everybody sees gain everybody, even asthmatics or people with autoimmune issues. So what I tried to focus on in the book, because there's so many different breathing uh, dysfunctions, right? And there's so many different breathing therapies, so many different exercises. There's a foundation that everybody can benefit from. And that's some of the stuff that we talked about. Breathe through your nose as often as you can. Don't worry about it if you're breathing through your mouth at some short amounts of time. Exhale fully. A lot of people pack in air, breathe slowly, breathe less. So if you just do these things, you're going to see benefits. And if you don't believe me, mark what happens with your heart rate variability, mark what happens with your blood pressure, mark what happens with your sleep quality, and you're going to see. So it's, uh, we'll break this down to two. I think you want some more specifics on, on the business go-getters and the athletes, but just starting with the athletes, think about how athletes get most of their energy. You'd say, oh, through, through their food. No, we get most of our energy through our breath. 
And if we are not breathing in a way that is efficient, if our inhalations and exhalations aren't closely coordinated, we're never really going to be able to hit that state of peak performance because we're going to be working a little too hard to get our breath. You know, athletes can breathe something like, you know, 100, 100 times an hour respiratory rate, 150 times, like an insane amount of, of breath that they're using, an insane amount of oxygen. You want to get that oxygen in the most efficient way. That's what performance is, right? Working at peak at peak efficiency. And so when you train your breathing in line with your metabolic needs, your heart rate tends to go down, your blood pressure can go down. And so you're able to function at the same rate as you were before, but you have more energy because your heart rate is lower, even though you're performing at the same state. So again, this stuff isn't controversial. This is the basis of athletic performance is efficiency. But everyone's been focusing on drink this goo, uh, you know, eat this tablet, uh, go to sleep at this time. But people aren't focusing on their breath, which is crazy. That's starting to change in a huge way. If you look at the work of Patrick McEwen or Brian McKenzie or Laird Hamilton, the very first thing they have their athletes do is to fix their breathing. And I've talked to these guys numerous times. They say 99% of them are breathing in a dysfunctional way. They push through the pain, right? They, they have the endurance to push through it. That doesn't mean they're healthy. And that doesn't mean they're reaching their peak levels. So there's a bunch of ways that athletes can do that. It starts with, guess what? Nasal breathing. And nasal breathing as often as you can. If you're a weightlifter, right? You can breathe through your mouth when you're doing that final... <laughs> No problem. But when you're training, you want to learn how to be breathing through your nose. I mean, this is that we've had the science for, for four or five decades now. And for some reason, it hasn't seeped in to a lot of athletic training. But that is changing in a huge way because now people have wearables. They can watch what happens with their heart rates, with their heart rate variability, with their sleep quality and their recovery. And from what I've seen, it is huge. And once people adopt these healthy breathing habits, once athletes do, they will never ever go back, you know, to a less efficient way of getting most of their energy. Yeah, I mean, I genuinely can attest to this. So um, just saying before this, so this couple of weeks back, I was with Luke Stoltman, world's strongest man athlete, and he's read the book and he recommended it to me a few months ago. And the, the events at World's Strongest Man are very short-lived. So, like you say, like when the event's happening, he might be mouth-breathing, but prepping up to that event and pre pre preparing for it, he's nasal-breathing the whole time. Um, and from this year to, to last year, there is such a big difference. And uh, some of it is down to definitely changing his breathing habits and his breathing techniques. And throughout training and life, he's, he's changed all those habits. Um, and then for me, I've done it on more of an endurance level and it's, wor it's worked for me as well. It really is uh, amazing for the athletic performance. So what about the business side of things and th those people? What, what, what's it doing for them? So I'm lucky enough to be uh, in San Francisco and I live really close to uh, UC San Francisco, which is a big research institution focused on medicine. And I was talking to Dr. Margaret Chesney who has worked with the NIH and she's also a professor at UCSF. And she studies breathing and she studies dysfunctional breathing in office places. That's kind of her specialty. And she was telling me that an estimated 80% of office workers suffer from something called email apnea. What this is, is when you sit down, maybe it's at the beginning of the day or after lunch or whenever, you answer your emails and open up all your screens and you say, oh my God, I have 30 emails. I got to get back to all these people. They're all mad at me. How am I ever going to do this? At the same time, somebody calls you. At the same time, you get a calendar entry for something. And when all of these things happen at once, when you're in the state of stress, you can stop breathing. Okay. And if you stop breathing for long enough and you continue in this manner, 
this can have some really deleterious effects on your health because you're not getting that constant supply of oxygen. And I asked her, I said, well, why do we stop breathing? Why don't we breathe too much? Why don't we hyperventilate? And she said, well, we do that too. But if you think about what we have learned to do through evolution, when we sense fear, right? Oh, there's an invading tribe coming into my cave. Uh, I need to be real quiet. We've adopted this, this skill to go, hold our breath so we're perfectly silent. And then, <laughs> so we've taken this because we don't live in caves. Well, most of us don't live in caves now. Um, we've taken these same patterns, these, these same uh, dysfunctional views of fear and applied them to our office space, just as we were talking about earlier. So these dysfunctional breathing patterns, if we do this all day long, we're going to jack our cortisol, we're going to jack our adrenaline, uh, we can jack our blood sugar. And if we do that for long enough, our bodies are just going to get worn down. And we're seeing this all over the place. So I think for office workers, if you want to be operating at peak level as well, dial in your breathing. Otherwise, you're going to be much more apt to burn out. And again, this isn't a, a leap of logic to get there. If you want to have energy and if you want to be present, you need to supply your body with oxygen. And if you're holding your breath or hyperventilating, your brain is not going to get the proper amount of oxygen to function properly. And so you're going to be at a disadvantage to your fellow coworkers. So again, easier said than done. What do you do? I use a, an app on my phone. You can use other little devices. So when you sit down in the morning, breathe in a paced pattern about five to six seconds in, five to six seconds out. I keep this little sound going in the background, especially in the morning. It's this annoying little boo so I don't have to look at anything. And then I can just lock into a proper respiratory rate right out of the gate, right when I start my work day. And it's made an incredible difference with me. I've taken my blood pressure, I've worn all kinds of devices for weeks at a time and looked at how dysfunctional my breathing was while I was working and it was terrible. And I was wondering why at the end of the day I was having these awful headaches and you know other issues and I was so tired is because I was struggling to get oxygen 